Today we are just going to talk about the um, South Asia's first bilateral robot, robotic nipple swelling mastectomy. See, agenda is it's like again we need to discuss about how the evolution of breast cancer treatment started, and only then we will know then why from where we started and where we have come now, and uh, why should we do a nipple sparing surgery, and why robotic surgery for a nipple sparing mastectomy, and what is the advantages of the system what we should use. The system what which you have used is the latest system for. Da Vinci XI system and again if I uh, speak about Angelina Jolie your understanding about it will be more again the psychological benefits of the what the patient has because of this treatment again uh, see when we started doing that was very long about 100 years ago when breast cancer surgeries were started to be performed again the surgeries were very uh, radical surgeries more aggressive surgeries there the entire breast along with the entire skin covering the breast along with the nipple, areola, underlying muscle, everything was removed. That was the initial surgery. This surgery was performed until as recent as 1970s. Slowly from then on, a lot of studies, trials are done and then the surgeries have become lesser and lesser and with the same effect or a better effect also. And again, then after starting those aggressive surgeries, then there came a little lesser surgery called modified radical mastectomy, where the part of the skin, but the nipple and areola was also removed. Then came where only the tumor, then came what is called breast conservation surgeries for specific cancers, where uh, a part of the tumor and the quadrant, the part, the entire part, uh, half of the half or quarter portion of the uh, breast was uh, removed. So we started from there and slowly it's been evolving and then if you see now most of the incisions for breast cancers will be like either what you see on the left side a big scar and again on the right side where it will be on the breast it will be on the breast and be a this size scar or a bigger scar and it will be like that so again that is where then we uh, then now the with a uh, lot of progress and a lot of trials and research and then now again we have come to a situation where we do a surgery called robotic skin and nipple sparing mastectomy where the entire skin envelope and the nipple which is also being completely preserved where this was the part of the skin was removed and nipple was also definitely removed all this is being preserved now with utmost um, principles of oncology where you can preserve it and things like that that has got a lot of impact on the patient and uh, there is no compromise on the cancer clearance and uh, the benefit what the patient derives out of this entire treatment is immense. Again, what is robotic assisted surgery? So during robotic assisted surgery, the surgeon sits in the, uh, the surgeon makes several small incisions, then uses a 3D HD camera for a crystal clear magnified view of the patient's anatomy. He or she, uh, she sits at the console next to you and operates the incision, operates through the incision using tiny instruments and the camera. And every hand movement your surgeon makes is translated by the Da Vinci surgical system in real time, bending and rotating the instruments so he or she can remove your disease, diseased organ. See, again, uh, most of us would have seen the Da Vinci surgical say, Obviously, the surgical systems have been predominantly used for uh, intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic surgeries. And now it's evolving. All the other organs are also being um, operated where we can improve the outcomes of the patient. Again, the, the, the exercise system consists of three components. One is called the surgeon's console, where the surgeon sits in it. Next is called a vision card. The vision card is a communication between the surgeon's con console and the patient's side card. The last is the patient cart, where the patient cart is just adjacent next to the patient, which is docked with the patient. And uh, the surgeon's, uh, the whatever movements which the surgeon makes in the surgeon's console is translated into the patient cart, and those fine movements and precise movements are being performed. And what happens during a robotic aspect surgery? The surgeon is with you in the operation theatre, seated at the, uh, in the console. Again, the surgeon has got a magnified view, which is around 10 times more than what he can normally, he or she can normally see. And not only the 10 times magnification, it's also a 3D view. 3D view, it's an immersive 3D, where you get a clear cut uh, picture. Again, uh, the surgeon, with the help of the small instruments, which is can talk to the patient, the, your surgeon makes movements, and the small movements are translated by the very fine micro instruments to give a crystal clear, uh, do a crystal clear surgery and uh, give good outcomes. And the 
normally the the range of movements and the type of movements which the instrument can make with the Dovenzi uh, system is more than what a normal human hand can make. So there are almost seven or eight different types of movements and the ranges are a uh, very high range of movements. Can just play the video, please? This is just a short video about the next thing is why robotics? Robotics is um, there's something called tremor filter where even a little elderly person, an elderly surgeon, or some people have intentional tremors. But even the small tremor that the surgeon has got, the tremor is being filtered while, it, uh, while you operate. The system filters the entire tremor, so the movements are very precise, and again. Micro anastomosis, there even a small anastomosis, small joinings can be done with absolute uh, precision. And again, what we do is also a thing called motion scaling, where even if you do a bigger movement with your hand, that is only translated as a very small and fine movement when you are operating. Again, the system, robotic system, has also got telesurgery, where you, even you can operate from a, a different uh, different hospital, you can operate on another hospital or differently, it's still evolving. Again, you can use, uh, we have got what is called a multi-quadrant surgery. This is more important when you do an abdominal surgery, where you will be able to access all quadrants of the abdomen. Again, it's uh, very versatile and very flexible. Again, Apollo Cancer, uh, Cancer Center Chennai is amongst the very few private cancer centers to offer this cutting edge uh, technology. And Da Vinci is the only uh, surgical robotic platform to have gotten US FDA and a European accreditation. Again, the Da Vinci as such as they have got a good vast experience of over 15 million procedures uh, performed across all specialties. And I mean, now coming to evolution, uh, evolution of robotic nipple sparing mastectomy. Uh, this is the first surgery by nipple sparing mastectomy by robotic was done by uh, Antonio in Italy in 2015. Then again, uh, another person in USA was performed in 2016. And again, Taiwan, uh, again in 2016 and 2018, it was performed. So it's a recently evolving surgery and uh, it is not the, not the only thing. It's not like many centers in the world do it. Very, very few centers in the world do it. Again, in US or Taiwan or anywhere in um, Europe also, very, very, very few centers do this uh, highly specialized uh, surgery. And we are the first, uh, me and Dr. Priya are the first people to perform it in uh, India, Chennai. And we performed it in 2023. And again, now coming to uh, you have, all of us know Angelina Jolie. The entire the world was uh, shocked and was surprised, and uh, there was some lot of disbelief when in 2013 uh, May March she just uh, mentioned that she gave a press release saying that she has mentioned uh, she has undergone bilateral mastectomy and also bilateral removal of both the ovaries. So this is because um, so Angelina Jolie, her grandparents, both her father's side and mother's side grandparents had a history of ovarian cancer. And again, her uh, aunt had a breast cancer, her mother had a breast cancer. So this is when she started, um, she wanted to make, find out whether there any way to prevent it. And uh, again, there were some genetic tests which was done as uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Priya. Again, genetic test was also patented only in uh, US as um, there was no genetic test available anywhere in the world as uh, late as 2011. Only in uh, after 2011 only other companies were could do a genetic uh, testing. Again in India we have got uh, genetic testing now which we routinely do it and things like that. So again she had a genetic testing done. The genetic testing proved that she had a, a gene uh, mutation of one of the genes called BRCA gene, BRCA1 gene. It's one of the commonest gene defect which causes a, a familial history of breast cancer. Again, then she took a very brave, brave decision and she had a detailed uh, discussion with the treating oncologist. And then she underwent the, where uh, both sides breasts were removed and they were reconstructed. And both sides breasts were removed and reconstructed. And again, both the ovaries were also removed. In those days, um, there was nothing called a robotic uh, uh, surgery because the first surgery was itself performed only in 2015. And again, she had undergone a conventional surgery, and um, again, as long so only after that, the the uh, need of genetic testing was become more uh, prominent. And again, patients were it's very easy to tell the patients the entire story and make them understand. And they also Google it and read about it. 
Again, our patient, we have, uh, so far we have performed a lot of, um, almost 16 patients, 16 patients, 16 surgeries. And again, this patient is a little bit more um, important for us because this is one of the patients where she was a 37 year old uh, housewife. She was a, she was a mother of two pre-teenage uh, children. She had two pre-teenage uh, children. Again, she had a cancer of the right breast. She was a stage two cancer. The day she walked into OPD, she was very uh, apprehensive, anxious. She just walked into OPD just with the swelling in the breast. She had not made any diagnosis. She was very apprehensive, very anxious. And again, um, then even the slightest of hint that it could be a cancer, she was very uh, stressed out about it and very anxious about it. And again, we uh, counseled her. We had to take a walk through her, help her out. And we took her, uh, we again, we got some basic investigations which we always perform for all patients. Then we got a biopsy done. Unfortunately, the biopsy turned out to be a little bit more aggressive type of breast cancer. That's called a triple negative disease. And uh, after that, we had to again sit, counsel her. We had to tell her that you need to first undergo a, um, a chemotherapy. So initially, it was more of she had to undergo chemotherapy. Then slowly, we had to talk to her about you know, because she's young, because she's triple negative. She falls under the criteria where she needs to undergo genetic testing. So we had to counsel her at every step. And again, we counseled her. We have a genetic counselor. We counseled her. We got her a uh, genetic testing done. Again, uh, by the time she was through the chemotherapy, as she was going, she had to receive eight cycles of chemotherapy. As she was going through the chemotherapy, uh, it was found that she was um, BRCA1 gene uh, positive. So again, again, the, now that the whole process of, uh, she thought it could be one simple, easy, kind of already it was a difficult challenge. Again, she thought it was different, uh, simple way only that side breast could be operated. It could be a different kind of surgery. Then again, we had to restart the whole thing. I mean, after the BRCA testing came as positive, we had to sit with her, talk to her, uh, her uh, family, we had to have a detailed chat saying that it's come as positive. So there's a high chance of you developing a opposite side uh, breast cancer, and there's a high chance of you developing ovarian cancer.